Alrighty, so in this video we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite .NET libraries for when it comes to async communication. My name is Vasily Lenik and you're watching the .NET architecture series where we are building a model or monolith notification system using industry's best practices. So the library in question is Mass Transit and I've used it across a couple of recent projects and it's really amazing in startups or product-based projects where you have to start fast with something and then you'll have to eventually grow into some other solution like cloud provided solution, etc. In order to work with mass transit, we're gonna need a couple of Nougat libraries and those will be uh, mass transit, mass transit and framework and RabbitMQ. So Nougats that I'm using in my solution right now for mass transit is obviously the mass transit then I'm using Entry Framework Core for the Outbooks capabilities. Next is Dependency in Action and the RabbitMQ provider that I'm gonna use. From the previous video, what has changed is basically I've removed all the plumbing code regarding messaging that I've previously had because Mass Transit will take care of it all. And in order to set up Mass Transit, we're gonna need a couple of things first. And one of the first things is the broker settings, which are the host, the username and password. In my case, I'm gonna show you that real quick. So in the app settings, I have RabbitMQ settings with a host, local host, the username and the password as guest and guest. A reminder, don't store your passwords inside app settings. Use a key vault or some service like that. We're gonna come to one a little bit later in the course and we're going to replace how we deal with all this kind of stuff. So for now, host, username, password. Next, for the Outbox implementation, we're going to need a registration DB context, which basically will look something like this, where we have the own model creating, the base one, adding an inbox state, the Outbox message entity, and the Outbox state entity. Do not dwell on it too much. It's basic setup for the Outbox right now. so. It's going to be bona fide copy paste code in your solution as well. Last thing is the installer itself. And let me make it a little bit bigger for ya. Yeah. So yeah, way too big. So we have the mass transit installer with add async processing over here. We first retrieve the configuration data from the app settings and binding it to a broker settings. Over here, we're going to need to resolve the DB context for our outbox. And we're going to use the default entity framework at DB context, the type of the DB context in our case, getting a connection string and using the NoSQL. Most of this uh, setup code you can also find in the official documentation or in the official GitHub repositories for how to set up. Uh, adding mass transit is really straightforward also. So you just add mass transit and then send the options themselves. So we're gonna set up the kebab case and point name for mother. We're gonna use and add the entity framework outbox with this specific registration DB context. And we're gonna use Postgres and bus outbox. And personally, I've set the query delay for one second for POC purposes. Probably you might want to have the query delay somewhat bigger so you don't hit the database that often. For consumers, I've implied a little bit of a hack since everything related to messaging is inside a shared folder. You're gonna need to know the assemblies from where to register the consumers. The practice of passing down assemblies to your DI setup is really popular nowadays with a lot of libraries like Mediator, Fluent Validation and all that stuff. Taking a similar approach to this, so it's really straightforward to use, so I have a list of assemblies provided over here which contain the consumers that I want for my services. Then we're gonna use RabbitMQ and basically this is the only part that you're gonna want to replace whenever you go from RabbitMQ to some SQLs or to the Azure service bus or any kind of queue. Only want to replace the DI setup without impacting the whole other part of the code. For RabbitMQ, it's really straightforward. So you're just gonna send the host, the username, password, auto restart on true, and you're gonna want to configure the endpoints. 
The entire solution right now is built around this iMessage sender interface, which abstracts away all the work related to async communication. And I just want to keep it that way. Maybe sometime in the future, I'm gonna just replace the iMessage sender and just paste the iBus or the other iPublish endpoint interface for the message sender. Let's take a look at the message sender for a second here. So it's an internal class that just receives an iBus and then publishes it away. So it's an abstraction on top of another abstraction, which is redundant in my opinion, most of the time. But if inside your solution, you have hundreds of places where you are calling one interface, it won't be that valuable for you to start replacing with iBus everywhere inside your system. Although what will be valuable is understanding the difference between the iBus and iPublish endpoint interfaces. The main difference up to me is that the iPublish endpoint is really a scoped service while iBus is not. So everywhere where you want to interact with the message broker using a scoped service, you're going to use the publish endpoint. Everywhere else, I'm going to use the iBus. Yeah, so basically that's how you would publish a message to the message bus. And regarding the consumers, let's take a look at first how I registered those and then I look at the consumers themselves. So inside the program.cs, I have over here the add async processing where I pass in the configuration. And then there is a new array with all the assemblies that I want to take care of. So for getting the assemblies, I've used the marker interfaces for those. So let's take a look at, for example, the event processor marker, which is basically somewhere over here. We have a service and we have the relay webhook command handler, which essentially is a consumer of the relay webhook command that is coming via RabbitMQ. In our case, it's basically an implementation of the iConsumer interface of T. And then you over here inside the consume method, you can have all the business logic that you want. For example, inside the webhooks, we have the webhook service services, handlers, uh, event receive listener, which is basically the same thing. It's an iConsumer of T where we have injected a couple of dependencies, the iMessage sender and the iWebhook repository. And basically we are just doing our logic behind the scenes. By the way, regarding the consume context of incoming event, we have the message itself. Then we have everything related to headers, so basically we really have all the constructs that I've previously had to manually write. We have them just out of the box and ready to use and abstracted away by, and at the same time we abstract away the broker that we're using. So that's a win. So essentially that's it for this library since it's really straightforward to configure, really easy to use. So I won't dwell on it way too much just to make the 10 minutes or the 20 minutes mark on YouTube. If you like this kind of content, subscribe, like the video, share, repost it online. It helps me a whole lot. And until the next video comes out, I'll leave somewhere over here some links to some other topics that might be interesting to you. Have a nice one.